Good day everyone and once again we're back together and uh, this time we'll be looking at uh, trigonometry. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you're part of the family. All right so uh, let's get right into it. Um, so they say uh, in the diagram below we've got the graph of f of x okay which is 10 of x minus 45 which is drawn right. Uh, uh, in this case they give us uh, x element of uh, negative 90 uh, to 180. Right, now, the first question that they ask us, they say write down the period uh, of F. Now, what you must just keep in mind is that, uh, remember, for a normal um, uh, uh, sign graph, you know, uh, the period in this case uh, would always be 360. Um, you know, if, you're to if uh, the, the, the frequency of that graph is 1, so where do you find the frequency? This is the coefficient of x, right? But for a 10 graph, please remember that the period in this case becomes 180. So the coefficient of x here is 1. So that means that the period uh, in this case would be 180 degrees. Okay, right. So please keep that in mind. So which means you will be able to draw a full 10 graph uh, within 180 degrees period okay right so let's quickly have a look at it okay so um right so in this graph they give us they gave us a 10 graph which is shifted to the to the right by uh, 45 degrees okay uh, so in this case we need to note that right now the second question they say draw the graph of g of x right which is minus 2x minus cos of 2x uh, for the same interval of negative 90 uh, to 180. Now, they had provided a grid uh, on, the, uh, on the answer book, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sh uh, draw it on the same set of axes as this, uh, since I do not have that. Okay, right. So what we are going, they said show all the intercepts with the um, uh, axes as well as the minimum and maximum points. All right, now, so we've got the graph of 2x, cos 2x, right? So the normal cos graph, I want you to please note, would always start at 1, right? Um, let me just use a different color there. So the normal cos graph would usually start at 1, okay? And uh, you know that at 90, the cos of uh, uh, x would be 0, and at 180, you'd have minus 1. Right, but now our period or our frequency is 2. What does that mean? It means that within a 360 period, you're able to draw two graphs. So this is a squashed up graph, okay? But secondly, what it means is that we're going to now uh, reflect the graph uh, around the x-axis. Why? Because everything that is now going to be negative, I mean, uh, everything that was positive is going to be negative. So it means we are going to have a reflection about the x-axis, right? So instead of it starting at 1, uh, our graph is going to start at uh, negative 1, right? But please remember, so a normal period we would have set at 90, but in, in this case we're squashing it, okay? So that means that whatever happened at 90 would now happen at 45 degrees. So I'm going to draw that graph. Okay, let me just use a different color. Okay, let's choose red. Okay, so at a uh, cost of 90 would have been zero. Okay, and uh, in this case, we have at, at 90, right? This is where it was going to be minus 1, but now it's going to be positive 1, and at 135, again, it's 0, and at 180, uh, it is back at minus 1, okay? And the same thing this side, so at negative 45, it is 0, okay? And at negative 90, that would be uh, 1 there, right? So our graph looks something like this, okay? Uh, you can actually use your calculator uh, to try and get those points, okay? And this is the graph that you would end up with, all right? So in this case, uh, just remember, uh, so you could say minus cos 2 uh, times 45, 
and 90 and so on get those points and then just join those points together okay but uh, you'll see that um, even when i taught this section i always said try to always imagine what the cost graph looks like the sine graph looks like and the 10 graph look like and that will help you uh, to always know how to draw it uh, correctly right so let's go to the next question they say write down the range of g now remember when we talk about the range, we're talking about the minimum and the maximum point, right? So the minimum point definitely is negative one and the maximum is one. So that means that the range for our graph, okay? That means that uh, the range would be y is an element of negative one uh, to one, okay? Or you can say uh, y is less than one and greater than negative one. Okay, you can choose either one of those ways um, of expressing it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Right, so uh, in this case, we've got in 6.4, they say to us, um, the, graph is, or the graph of G is shifted to the left, okay, uh, to form a graph of H, okay? So it's shifted 45 degrees, to the left remember when we're shifting to the left we say plus 45 right um and when we're shifting to the right we say minus right so the graph of h will be the graph of g uh, where we see x we're going to just shift it uh, by 45 degrees so it means that h of x right will be equal to g of x plus 45 Okay, so what that simply means is that we're going to say minus the cos of 2 times x plus 45, right? Now, ladies and gents, um, you know, they wanted you to write this in the simplest form. Um, we can write it like that, or what we can do is say, well, this is the same as the cos of 2x plus 90 okay now uh, in this case i want you to note ladies and gents if you really wanted to uh, you can simplify this further i don't know if they would have wanted us to do so okay uh, but you'll note that uh, this graph actually uh, if you wanted to apply the um, you know the compound formula so that would be minus the cos of um, you know so let's take that minus out so that would be cos of 2x uh, cos of 90, right, minus sine of 2x, sine of 90 degrees, right? So that becomes, uh, right, cos of 90, you would remember, uh, in this case is 1, right? So in this, uh, so that becomes minus cos of 2x, right? And oh, sorry, uh, cos of 90, rather, uh, is 0, right? Uh, sorry about that. So cos of 90 is 0, so it makes this entire thing become 0, minus the sine of 2x, sine of 90. Sine of 90 is 1, so we are left with minus sine of 2x, right? So if you wanted to, you can say, well, it means that h of x would actually be a positive sine of 2x all right so that would be the way in which you can represent this in the simplest way right let's go on to the next one now they say to us use the equations uh, uh use the graphs rather to determine the values of x okay uh, in the interval minus 90 to 90 right okay uh for which f of x right so this graph that we had there the graph, uh, the 10 graph, uh, for which uh, f of x is greater than 1. So, where is our 10 graph greater than 1? Well, um, in this case, I want you to note, okay, so if we go to that point there, right, it's greater than 1 definitely at that point there, right, um, from, from 90 all the way up, up until uh, 135 right but um on this side 
Okay, where else is it greater than 90? Now you'll see that from negative 90, right, all the way up until negative 45, the graph is greater than zero. So this one would not be applicable because remember they said between negative 90 and 90, right? Oh, I've just removed uh, the graph that we drew there. Right, remember they said between negative 90 and 90, so which means the only plausible solution will be between negative 90 and negative 45, right? So we can say, well, X is an element of, okay, negative 90. All right, because they said greater than uh, 1, in this case, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to exclude negative 90 because remember at negative 90, it's exactly equal to 1. So that would be... Um, negative 90 okay all the way to uh, negative 45 and please remember uh, negative 5 and 45 would be excluded as well okay because the graph never actually reaches uh, that point okay right I hope that makes sense ladies and gents Right, the next one, they say where cos of uh, 2 cos of 2x minus 1 is greater than 0. Now, remember, they said use the graphs, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the graph of g, right? Because that looks very close to the graph of g, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, how can I get this expression to look like the graph of g? Right, so... If I take um, 2 cos of 2x and I say, well, take the 1 to the other side, so that would be greater than 1, right? And I divide both sides by 2, okay? So um, that would be greater than a half, right? So that divide by that. But remember that uh, the graph of g was negative. So... That means I multiply everything by a negative. So if I say multiplied by negative, now that changes the sign of the inequality. <clears throat> right, so to negative a half. Uh, sorry about that. I haven't fully recovered from the little flu that uh, I had. So please do forgive me about that. Okay, so uh, in this case, what we are in fact asking, so this represents g of x. So we're asking where is g of x less than negative a half, right? So now let's go back to that g of x graph, okay? So where would g of x, which is the red graph, okay, be equal to negative a half? Now, you must remember that uh, for the cos graph, where it is equal to a half, that would be at 60 degrees, right? But remember, you've got, um, in this case, cos of 2x. So that would happen at uh, 30. So this means this angle here, so where it would be equal to a half, that would be at minus, I mean, at uh, 30 degrees. So that would be 30 degrees there. But where else? Okay. So it would be at that point there. Um, so think about it from zero. Um, it is 30 degrees towards the right. Okay, so it means that uh, also if I look at it uh, from there, right, uh, it should also be uh, 30 degrees from there, right? Uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, we need to keep in mind, they said between the interval minus 90 and 90. So I, I don't even need to look at that side, right? Okay, so where is it greater than negative a half? So that would be uh, from uh, that 30 degrees there all the way up until um, 90 degrees, right? And when I look at it from this side here, Again, this is from minus 30, right? So that would be minus 30 over there, right? So it would be from, um, so it would be from 90, negative 90, all the way till 
uh, minus 30. Remember, it is greater than negative a half there, right? So we want where the graph is above negative a half in this case. So it would be from negative 90 um, to negative 30. So we can say uh, as a solution there, right? Uh, X would be, uh, look, we don't have uh, enough space. Just going to remove this part here, right? So we'd say X would be an element of, okay? That would be negative 90. Uh, by the way, negative 90 should be included uh, because it is greater than, uh, no, actually they said less than, sorry, uh, less than uh, negative a half. Okay, so less than negative a half. So in this case, it means we're looking at that point there from negative 30, right? It's below negative a half there, right? Uh, from negative 30 to 30, right? And uh, both values being excluded because uh, remember between those two points, okay, let me just try and indicate it in a different color. Okay, so between those two points, uh, please remember that it is exactly 30, I mean, a negative a half at 30. So the graph is less than negative a half between negative 30 and 30. So we can say as our answer, X would be an element of negative 30 excluded to 30, which is also excluded. Right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, uh, that is as per the graph that we saw there. Right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. And that was the last question, actually. That was just a repetition of the graph, uh, just in case I needed it, okay? Uh, right, so I will see you guys again next time. All right, we'll be looking at um, a three-dimensional uh, trig in the next question. All right, shop, shop.